Hi students, welcome to session 13 of Habitat of the Living. In the previous session, we studied about adaptations for various habitats, various major habitats. So we have been through adaptations, we have, we are done through adaptations for deserts, as well as adaptations for grasslands, adaptations for various types of forests. And today's session, we will study about adaptations for mountains and polar regions, the two major habitats which are found, which are found on our planet. So let us revise about mountains and adaptations of mountains and polar regions. Yes, we studied about uh, mountains and polar regions that Earth's polar regions, the Arctic in the north and Antarctic in the south are, and tall mountains are extremely cold and the lowest temperature recorded ever in the Antarctic is minus 88 degree Celsius and animals like polar bear, penguin, seal, walrus, they are found in such polar regions. Even mountain goat, sheep, yak and beetles are some of the animals which are found in the mountains. So basically we are going to study about the animals and plants which are found in mountains as well as in polar regions. So let us start with today's session and learn about the adaptations for these major habitats. Yes, adaptations for mountains. Now, the animals which have it adapted themselves to survive in such habitats are polar bears, yak, mountain goats and other animals too which we are going to discuss. So some mountain animals hibernate or migrate to warmer areas during colder months. Like here you can see a beautiful image of one such animal which is found on mountains. That is alpine marmot. So alpine marmot is one such animal that hibernates nine months of the year to save energy and avoids harsh winter conditions. And other animals reduce their activity level, saving their energy only to look for food. So one of those animals, one of these animals is alpine marmot. So beautiful picture it is, right? So these animals hibernate or migrate to warmer areas during colder months because in winter season there is extreme temperature means it's freezing on mountains and that is why such animals are not able to survive over there. So because of the scarcity of food and because of scarcity of water they have to migrate to warmer areas. The second animal which has several adapt adaptation to survive in the mountains is yak. Yak's mouth is adapted for grazing a variety of plants and its thick coat of hair protects it from cold. Even there are other adaptations of yak too. This is a beautiful picture of yak. You can see here their large chest and lungs are adaptations to low oxygen content in the mountains so they are able to survive there because we know that as we go higher and higher the temperature or we can say rather the oxygen content decreases on higher altitudes sorry at higher altitudes so yak is one such animal that has large chest and lungs and these are its adaptations because they can survive because of the low content in the mountains and it also uses its hooves and horns to break the ice from frozen ground and finally they graze on the grass. So this is one such adaptation there are many adaptations of one such animal which is found on mountains. There are other animals too which are found on mountains like this. Uh, these are beautiful images of one such animal called as mountain goat. This is a closer view of mountain goat 
and this you can see here that mountain goat is standing on the mountain at the top of the mountain right so mountain goats also have adapted to eat almost any plant substance the mountain range provides so this keeps them from having to travel long distances in search of food and therefore saves them energy and mountain goats can be found in the mountains of northwestern regions of North America where they seem to cling and move around on the impossibly steep slopes because we can see that mountains have steep slopes so they can uh, mountain goats can cling and they move around on these steep slopes they have such adaptations so mountain goats have two beige colored horns here you can see these two horns let me mark it for you these are two horns so mountain goats have such colored horns that curl back and reach a length of about 12 inches so mountain goats weigh about 100 to 200 pounds and they are 4.5 feet long and their shoulder height is also about 36 to 48 inches even the females mountain female and goat females are smaller than the males by almost 30 percent so they have very round bodies which protect them from cold even their legs are about 20 inches long here you can see this we cannot measure it but approximately it is 20 inches long and their hooves are adapted to the rugged slopes by being flexible like rubber so that they can jump from rock to rock and even their coloring their skin is white and their fur is very fluffy and every strand of hair is about two inches long so basically the mountain goat has eight teeth in front so it can easily grab big patches of grass which are available on mountains so that they can eat this these big patches of grass and they can survive over there it acts as food for them so these animals like mountain goats alpine marmot and yak these are an a an sorry animals which have adapted themselves to survive in such conditions such temperatures that they can migrate or hibernate towards warmer areas to warmer areas during winter months and they can have such type of food because of their teeth which is adapted to eat grass so these are the animals which are found on mountains let us see what type of plants are found on mountains and see let us see their characteristics too so students trees cannot grow at higher elevations due to harsh winds and extreme climates so the area in which trees cease to grow in the mountain range is known as timber line or tree line where the trees cease to grow in the mountain range there is only a particular area till where these trees can grow these plants can grow so let us see that which plants grow yes here you can see a beautiful image of mountains and you can see here not much of the trees are there not there are not tall trees as we saw in forests tropical forests we saw in the slides of tropical forests and here you can see there are some alpines alpine perennial so there are very low growth trees begin to thin as we travel higher in the mountain biome tree cannot trees cannot grow at high elevations and plants that can survive above 3000 feet include sparse grasses here you can see some of the grasses so here are sparse grasses and these are alpine perennials these are sparse grasses means less number of grass uh, less number of plants grow over here and these are alpine 
perennials means beautiful colored different colored flowers grow over here but tall trees cannot grow over here because plants that can survive above 3000 feet are the grasses sparse grasses and alpine perennials which have adapted to extreme cold and heat and even strong sunlight heavy winds and even the fluctuations between arid and damp conditions so these plants grow very low to the ground allowing them to stay below the snowpack in winter months so they are not pelted or melted with ice they are not pelted with ice and snow and during summer season and spring season these grasses in the mountains spring and summer in the mountains is actually a very short period between late june and september after which frosts begin and mountain ranges are covered with snow so for this reason plants have adapted to store food moisture and energy and plants at higher elevations have stems or rhizomes which extend deep beneath the soil surface to get water and these stems allow food storage so plants can begin immediate growth in the spring without having to wait for the soil to thaw to provide water and nutrients because very low amount of we cannot say that very there, there is very less amount of nutrients but there is scarcity of water in winter months because the water freeze freezes and so other plants have formed a waxy substance on their leaves that seals the moisture in due to the fact that thin soil in the mountains cannot retain the moisture and so the mountains are home to many evergreen trees and plants which keep their leaves throughout the winter therefore they don't require energy and nutrients to develop new leaves during the short growing season so this is what the adaptations of plants are which survive on the mountains so that was all about adaptations for mountains now let us study about adaptations for other major habitat which exists on our planet that is polar regions so which animals and plants are found in polar regions and what type of adaptations do they have let us have a look at it yes animals in the polar regions are highly adapted for living in the coldest places of the world like we discussed that there is antarctic and arctic region which we consider as the coldest places in the world so animals in the polar regions are highly adapted they have to adapt themselves in such a way that they can withstand these harsh conditions so which type of animal which animal is found on the polar regions yes polar bear if an animal or plant is to survive it must be able to fit it must be able to fit in with the environmental conditions which occur in its habitat so this fitting in is called adaptation as we discussed in previous sessions so every living thing is adapted to enable it to cope up with a particular habitat environmental factors such as air water soil light and temperature so polar bear also have has several adaptations to survive in the polar regions like its white fur it matches the surroundings that is snow making the polar bear hard to spot so this is one such major adaptation of polar bear then its small ears and tail minimize heat loss from the body even the, its padded feet help it to walk on the snow and thick fur and a layer of fat under the polar bear skin protects the polar bear from cold so this is what it helps to survive in this type of condition so depending upon what sort of habitat it lives in an animal or plant like polar bear which is an animal it may have to adjust itself to the changes in its environment and the most obvious changes are those of lengthening and shortening of daylight hours and increasing and decreasing of temperature this is what uh, sorry this is what happens when autumn turns into winter 
So survival at, at the poles, at the polar regions is very much difficult for such animals and for plants also. So there are other animals too like here you can see the beautiful images of penguin and these are two different images of arctic fox. So these are some animals that survive at the poles. Polar bears and penguins and arctic fox. So polar bears live only in the arctic that is the north pole and many species of penguins are found only in the Antarctic that is South Pole. As we know that Arctic is in the South, North Pole and Antarctic is in the South Pole. So both the animals are highly adapted for living in the coldest places in the world. So it is very important for a mammal being a warm-blooded vertebrate. Vertebrate means the animals which have backbone. So being a warm-blooded vertebrate to keep warm in order to maintain its body at a constant temperature. Warm blooded means it keeps itself warm in order to maintain its body at a constant temperature. Their temperature do not vary or change with the surrounding temperature. And they have to be. They have to be warm blooded because if it cannot do this, it will die. As we know that the Arctic is the coldest place which is inhabited by land animals and these have these animals have very thick fur which insulates the body by trapping air and they also have a layer of stored fat under the skin beneath the skin which gives additional insulation. So like many Arctic mammals the polar bear has white fur made of hollow hairs which traps and warms air there are, there is ultraviolet light coming from coming from the sun which is funneled from the sun down the hairs to the bear's black skin changing it into warmth the dense undercoat is covered with an outer coat of long guard hairs in polar bear and these help to keep the polar bear dry and warm while it is swimming so the body shape and size of many cold climate mammals differ quite a lot from similar species living in the warmer areas. Students, generally an animal becomes rounder and bulkier when its environment is very cold. You can notice in yourself also that in winter season we need to eat a lot because it gives us heat, it pro produces heat after we eat, after digestion. So, an animal which lives in such environment which is very cold is somewhat that they become rounder and bulkier. Also, polar bear's legs, ears and tail are shorter but these adaptations help to conserve heat. In short, a football shaped animal would be warmest of all. So, here we can see that there is arctic fox, even arctic fox also certainly it is not as round as a football but it does differ in shape from red fox which is seen in Britain. It has rounder plumper body you can see here. It has rounder plumper body, shorter legs and tail as well as shorter muzzle and ears. The thick fur turns white in the winter. Here you can see two pictures, two different pictures of the arctic fox you can see how white it is. So the thick fur turns white in the winter season and the soles of the feet are covered in fur. And all these adaptations allow the arctic fox to cope up with, the, with an outside temperature as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. And here you can see when the temperature changes, that means when summer arrives, when the summer season occurs, somewhat color of the arctic fox changes from white to brown and here you can see some water also appears because this ice starts melting. So even there are other animals like arctic hares. These are all 
optic hairs. This is optic hair and this is snowshoe hair. So these arctic hairs also show similar physical conditions to the cold. They have shorter ears and, sh and even shorter, shorter stockier legs than the brown hair. And the snowshoe hair has also similar size of ears and legs to the arctic hair. But in addition, it has its own built in snowshoes. That means it has enlarged hind feet which help it when crossing soft snow. So there is somewhat difference between these arctic hairs and snowshoe hair because it lives in more cold conditions. So that is all about the animals which are found in polar regions. Let us now see that which plants are found on polar regions. Yes. Plants found, sorry, not on, in polar regions. Plants found in the polar regions are short in height and they remain dormant for several months. So their leaves are narrow like spines which shed rapidly. That is why they are narrow. And plants also grow close to the ground and towards each other. So this is a strategy of plants that helps to resist the effects of cold weather and reduce damage which is caused by wind blown, snow and ice particles. So due to very low temperature trees are not usually found in these regions. First the size of the plants and their structures make this survival possible. So there are small plants in shallow root systems which compensate for the thin layer of soil and small leaves which minimize the amount of water which is lost through the leaf surface. And here we can see some of the beautiful examples, beautiful plants, images of plants which are grown, on, uh, grown in the polar regions. These are all images of the plants which are taken in summer season because they are able to flower in summer season and spring season. Right, so there are fuzzy coverings on stems, leaves and buds and woolly seed which covers provide seed covers which provide additional protection from the wind. So plants have also adapted to the long winters and short intense polar summers. There are polar summers too. Like many arctic species can grow under a layer of snow and virtually all polar plants, polar region plants are able to photosynthesize in extremely cold temperatures. Why? Because during the short polar summer, plants use the long hours of sunlight. Here you can see that they use long hours of sunlight to quickly develop and produce flowers and seeds. And flowers of some plants are cup shaped and they direct the sun's rays towards the center of the flower. So dark colored plants absorb more of the sun's energy and in addition to this many species of plants are there like alpine perennial, arctic bell heather, Christmas jewel berries. They grow and they bloom during the summer or spring season dying back in the winter and returning the following spring from their root stock. So this allows the plants to direct less energy into seed production and some species do not produce seeds at all but they do reproduce through root growth. So these are some of the plants which are found in the polar regions, not on the polar regions, in the polar regions. So these are some animals and plants which are found in the polar regions. And I hope you liked this session learning about adaptations for mountains and adaptations for polar regions too. So we will meet in the next session and we will continue this topic of adaptation for other major habitat. So don't miss it and do attend that session. Right, so we will meet in the next session till then. Enjoy and have a very great time.